Core data allows us to link entities together using relationships. And when we request an object, we'll get those relationships provided to us automatically. However, this is an area where core data really starts to show its age as you'll see. We're gonna make a custom NS manage object subclass we can edit to add a few wrappers to make the whole thing play nicely with SwiftUI. Now to demonstrate this, we're gonna work with two entities. One to track candy bars and one to track the countries where those candy bars come from. And have a relationship between them. Now relationships come in four different types. First, you have a one to one where one object in this entity has another object over here matching it, exactly one each time. In our example, it means that one candy bar will first have been introduced in one country, which is true, but that one country can only ever have introduced one candy bar, which is a bit iffy. So one to one. One candy introduced in one country, one country only ever has one candy bar introduced there. Another option is one to many. In our example, it would mean that one candy bar can have been introduced in many countries at the same time, but those countries still only get to have one candy bar uh, introduced there. Then we have many to one, which is that flipping around, all right, come on, get a treat. Flipping around the other example, many to one, what this means is, come on dogs. <clears throat> what this means is that uh, we could have many candy bars all introduced in a single country, right? So this, can, this candy bar here was first introduced in this, this, this place here, for example. And that each country can therefore have introduced many types of candy. And finally, we have many to many, where there are many candy bars here and many countries here, and each candy bar could have been introduced in many countries, and each country could have introduced many candy bars. Now, all of those are useful at different times in your code, but in this example, I think the many to one relationship makes the most sense. To be able to say that each type of candy was first introduced in a particular country, like invented in one particular country. Hello, I do see you. I know, chocolate, I know. You don't get chocolate, you're a dog. Um, each candy bar was first invented in one place, but each country can invent multiple candy bars, which makes sense, I think. Anyway, with that in mind, go ahead and open up your data model and then add some entities here. We have two entities, one for candy bars and one for countries. Um, the first one I'll call candy. Second one I'll call country. And then for candy, I'll give this thing a single attribute, which is name, the name of the candy, and that's gonna be a string. Then for country, I'm gonna add two strings here. We'll say we have a uh, full name and a short name. Uh, both of which will oops, uh, be strings. So string and string. I do see you down there. I am conscious of you being very hungry dogs who never get fed. Come on, that's it though, it's your last treat. Come on, one, stretch, stretch. Good dog, well done. Okay, so we've got our candy in our country right here. And <clears throat> this makes sense, I think. It's a, it's a good layout because um, yes, some uh, types of candy have the same name, uh, like Smarties, for example, in the US and UK mean different things. Um, countries, they're unique. Like no two countries have the same name, that'd be confusing, right? So we're gonna add a constraint for the short name of our country. So you wanna go ahead and bring up the data model inspector. I do see you, dog, I do see you're a good dog. And then select country, oh, don't lick me. Ugh. And then um, go ahead and with country selected, go ahead and press plus four constraints here and rename this thing to be, come on, you can do it. There we go. Rename this thing to be short name. So we're saying the short name of each country must be unique. That's how it's done. Now, before we're done here, we're going to tell core data there's a one to many relationship between candy and country or many to one, many direction you're looking. One to many this way, many to one this way, depending on you look at it. Uh, and to do that, you want to select country here and then look under the relationships area for this plus button and then press plus inside there. Call this thing candy and change destination to be candy. So it's pointing to there. And now over in the data model inspector, change type to be to many. So one country has many candy. That's what we're saying here. <clears throat> now, 
select candy and then add a relationship here too. And we'll say this thing is called origin. Where the candy is from, its destination should be country. And it's inverse, the opposite of it will be candy. So it understands that country candy is the same as candy origin. They're both the same relationship between these two. And that completes our entities, right? So the next step is to go ahead and look at the Xcode code we'd get from this. So press Command S to save your quality model. Select both your entities, candy and country. Then change code gen from class definition to be manual none. And then go to editor, create NS managed object subclass. Press next and press next. And then put it into the correct location. So that'll be in here and in here. Keep your code neatly organized. Boom. So you're going to get a whole bunch of code now. And um, there are four now because there's two entities, candy and country. Uh, it is complaining loudly at me. Cool. There we go. Uh, so candy and country <clears throat> at the same time, with each one having properties and properties here, right here. And it should be pretty much what you expected. You're not getting any more treats from me. Um, but you will notice that the country's properties, this is more complicated here because there's all sorts of code down here to add candy uh, to our objects, right? They understand it's more complex now. Um, and there's also the candy thing up here. Now, previously we looked at how to clean up core letters optionals using these NS, come here for a scratch then, these NS managed object subclasses. That's what we looked at it doing. But here there's a bonus complexity, which is that this thing has a candy property, which is an optional NS set. And we haven't used NS sets before because they're the older objective C data type. They're the equivalent of Swift's modern set. But we can't use NS set with for each. It doesn't work. Can't use that. And so to fix this, we're going to modify the files Xcode made for us, adding some convenience wrappers to make Swift UI work better. For the candy class, that's easy, right? We've got uh, our name here. So we'll just say there is a public var unwrapped name. Thank you, dog. Uh, which is a string. And that will be our name nil coalescing down to unknown candy. That's the candy one done. For the country one, this is more complex because we want to have the wrapped short name and the wrapped full name. So that's public var wrapped short name, a string, and that's short name, capital N, nil coalescing, unknown country. And then the same thing for wrapped full name. So full name here, and then full name here. However, things are more complex when it comes to this candy property because an NS set, and that could contain anything at all. It doesn't say it's an NS set of candy. Now we know it is, but core data has not said that because NS set does not work that way. And so to get anything useful from this for a Swift UI layout, we'll convert this thing from an NS set to a set of candy. That is a Swift native type, the set, which knows it's got candy inside. Once we have that, we can convert it to be an array so that for each can loop over individual values from there. We'll also sort the array so it has a candy bars in a sensible order. Now Swift actually lets us put some of those steps into one because sorting a set automatically returns an array because otherwise it wouldn't be sorted anymore. You know, sorting a set would just give you another unsorted set, right? However, sorting the array is harder than you might think because this is an array of custom types. So we can't just use sorted and hope for the best. Instead, we're going to provide a custom closure to say how to sort it. So we're going to say public var candy array is an array of candy. And this will first get our set equals our current candy as a set of candy, nil coalescing to an empty array. Oh, empty set, sorry. So we're trying here a conditional typecast, which means this NS set is actually going to be a set of candy. Try and convert from NS set to set of candy. And if that works, brilliant. Use that. If it fails, this whole thing, this whole conditional typecast will return nil. It'll fail the test and therefore we'll get back an empty set instead. And now we can return 
that set sorted. And we're going to say $0.wrap name is less than $1.wrap name. Like that. Now it's wrap name, please. It's thinking. Uh, now what I call it in candy? I called it unwrap name. <laughs> Sorry. Wrap name. My mistake. Okay. So we've converted this pretty hideous optional NS set with no idea of what's inside it into a sensible, this is an array of candy and it's sorted in a sensible way. So that's really nice. And that completes our core data classes. And so now we can write some Swift UI code to make all this work. Over in content view, we already have our managed object context. That's hiding these bars. So you can see what's going on more easily. We already have our managed object context right here. We're going to add to that a fetch request up here. So at fetch request using sort descriptors of an empty array. No predicate. Var countries will be a fetched results of country. Now we haven't had to specify anything about our fetch request to say what the relationships are, right? Core data understands that country and candy is linked together. It understands how it's going to work. It's not going to complain here in terms of making us uh, be exact in terms of what we ask for. It will always work. It'll pull out the country correctly and pull out the candy bars for it without any further questions, which is really nice. <clears throat> so next up, the body of the view down here. We're going to use a list with two for each views inside it, one to make a section for each country, and then one to make a candy inside each country. So we're going to have uh, that list with the countries and then candy bars inside the countries. And then we'll have below the list in like a V stack a button to add some sample data. So I'll say there's a V stack here with a list inside it. And first up, we'll have for each one of our countries with ID of backslash dot self, give me a country in. So for each one of our countries, give me a section with a title and I'll use our country wrapped full name like that. And then inside the section, we'll say another for each for each country dot candy array with again ID of backslash dot self give me one candy in text candy dot wrapped name so show all the countries and all the candies for those countries there now after the list down here we'll do button add examples so we have some sample data to work with and here we'll make a bunch of candy We'll say, let candy one be a candy with a context of our managed object context. Candy one dot name is a Mars, the classic Mars bar. Uh, candy one dot origin. This is going to be a country object. Again, our managed object context. Remember, it's a separate object. Uh, candy one origin dot short name is capital N is the UK because it's made in the UK first. And then candy one origin question mark dot full name is United Kingdom. Now I'm going to copy and paste a few times here, otherwise be a, a lot of typing. So copy and paste candy one to be two, three and four. So we've got four kinds of candy. I just change these numbers a little bit. So candy two, candy two, candy two, candy two, candy two, candy three, Candy three, 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 and then four, 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 four. So <clears throat> candy two, we'll say, is a Kit Kat. That was first made in the UK, so that's all the same. Candy three, we'll say, is a Twix bar. That was first made in the UK. We do like chocolate here a lot. <laughs> and then candy four is a Toblerone. That was made in Switzerland. That's the exception here. <laughs> Switzerland. And the short name for Switzerland is CH because they are the Helvetican Republic or Confederation, sorry. <clears throat> anyway, four candy bars here with their correct origins and a dog. You hear the word candy? No. Try mock.save. All right, you've been patient. Come on. This is it, though. Honestly, I said that before, I'm sure, at least twice. Um, come on. Is it? Good dogs. You are good dogs. Now clear off. Now, please make sure you run this code. Give it a try. Um, it just worked brilliantly well. 
Uh, I'll press Command R to build and run the code now, and hopefully I've made no comedy typos along the way. I'll press Add Examples, and we should see, bang. Switzerland has Toblerone, UK has KitKat, Mars, and Twix. And if you don't see that, if you see an error in your debug log or similar, um, if nothing happens, there's a good chance you have not got the merge policy in place in our data controller. You've got to set a merge policy here. Remember, I made sure all my countries have a unique name. That was a constraint we added into the model when we were working earlier. I said the model here for country uh, had a constraint over here on short name. So short name has to be unique. So even though we make lots of the objects inside our content view, we make multiple UKs here, it'll only actually create one of them behind the scenes because the short name UK must be unique. And so it'll understand that Mars, KitKat, and Twix belong to the same piece of data. So the result is all our data is beautifully split up by country and then sorted totally around KitKat, Mars, and Twix, all alphabetical. Uh, and that's all by pressing the Add Examples button. It's doing most of the work for us. In fact, all the heavy lifting is being done by Core Data and a little bit of work from us when we had to do the uh, wrapper stuff for our, our candy array here. But that's just because NS sets being used and we don't want, want to get rid of that sort of old Objective-C style of code and have a nice network Swift UI. Anyway, the result I think is quite brilliant and it shows the power of Core Data. And hungry dogs, hungry, hungry dogs. You're a good dog. Yeah, you are. And you're quite good too. Ha, ha, ha.